Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's week five, session five of the 500 meter plan. It's the end, it's test day, it's race day. So yeah, so this is me just about getting to the warm up ready for the British Rowing Indoor Championships. It's uh, run about 10 past 11 in the morning. The race is at 11.32 and it's freezing today. So if you can hear background noise, that's my fan running. It's basically uh, freezing outside at zero um, and uh, it's very, 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 very cold in here today. So. Uh, yeah, so today's uh, just going to be a, a nice long warm up. Uh, I'll have a counter up there just to kind of let you know where we're getting to in terms of the race. And then it's going to be the 500 meter race. I'll do the same as before where I'll basically just run my race and then I'll just double that up to last run about three minutes so that uh, as far as you're concerned, you can row along with me. Okay, so remember this is a 500 meter test at the end, so it is absolutely flat out. Um, you don't need to follow me for stroke rate or anything, you're just going as fast as you can. But the warm up is just going to be a nice progression um, through, let's see, what is the time? Yeah, so it's 7 minutes past 11, so I've got 25 minutes until the race. So I figure spend around about 20 minutes-ish, just going to build it up through various motions for the warm-up. Okay, so let's get ready for that. Set up your drag factor first on your machine. Uh, I've done that already. I'm slightly higher than normal. I'm up at around about 140 instead of 130. Um, then go to your monitor and set it at eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And then finally, the foot straps. Set them where you would like for this kind of a race. Some people do tend to set their feet a little bit higher for a 500 meter race and like a one minute and things, but I'm still going to continue with the lace covering either the bottom lace of my shoe or in my case in socks so that they let me bend comfortably forward at the front. Raising my feet up too high in socks is actually quite uncomfortable. It's okay in shoes but not in socks. So anyway we're just going to start off at 18 strokes a minute. So here we go then in three, two, one, go. Oh, so I'm freezing cold so I'm just going to go at a nice gentle pace here to try and just warm up a little bit, like literally warm up a bit. Sorry to keep on talking about temperature, but it's kind of important as my muscles are freezing. Even the handle feels like ice. All right, so I'm connected to the machine, the laptop for the race. And it's just come up with a, please wait for further instruction screen. It kind of tends to just bing and bong the whole time, so. But what that means is that I've lost any sense of how we're doing for time right now. Because the monitor's shut off. That's okay. Don't have to worry, just rowing softly anyway. Hopefully I'm not too far off, 18 strokes a minute. And this way I can just do it by feel. Just increase stroke rates and pace as I go through this warm up to try and get warm enough for the race. Got to say my little heart rate tracker, the whoop strap or band, whatever you want to call it, didn't exactly give me good news this morning. I was like 20% recovered or 22% recovered. My HRV was, I think it was down at 55. It's usually up at 155. So, according to my strap, I really shouldn't be doing this today. But this is the downside to using a fitness tracker and actually having a calendared schedule in place. But I can't exactly call up British Rowing and say, Sorry guys, can we delay this until tomorrow please? My fitness tracker seems to think I shouldn't be racing today. So 
so we'll see how it goes. To be honest, I don't know how I feel. Don't know whether I feel energized or sluggish or... I know I'm not looking forward to that kind of absolute intensity thing, but what's the point of entering a race if you don't actually prepare to race? Right, I'm gonna just take the stroke rate up a little bit, which I figure is gonna be around about 20, but I still don't have a screen, so here we go, just a little bit faster. Just a bit more of a push from the legs. My fingers are actually getting cold as I move forwards because of the kind of the draft. Huh. Anyway. I'm start thinking a bit about technique now that body's eased off a bit. So just think about right now I want to think about how far forwards my slide is going. So I want to make sure to get to here on each stroke during the race. Shins vertical, primed, coiled, ready to spring back. Whereas I might take a shorter slide I don't quite have that coiled spring and then I was doing a bit of work yesterday trying to focus on this lurch that I have from my shoulders where I grab forwards so I'm trying to work on getting in position and then holding my shoulders where they are and not having that kind of extra reach which helps with the connection timing and hopefully the power transfer now let's take three more strokes here Now I'm just going to ease off a bit. Don't want to get too tired with my legs and arms. It's important that I'm firing on all cylinders, that the engine is ready to go right up to maximum. But at the same time, I don't want to use up half of the fuel that's available for the race by going on too hard and too fast in the warm-up. Just about getting the blood flowing, the heart beating and just Trying to think about any last minute sequencing tweaks that you want to try and grind in. Like I say, like the that lurch I have, which does increase the reach I have at the front. But like I say, I think it that extra reach doesn't actually add anything. If anything, it's taking away because it means I'm not hitting getting the timing of the hitting the flywheel right but still important to think about your whole technique let's take it back up slightly here we go 
So do think about posture. Make sure you're nice and powerful up in your sit bones. Leaning into that one o'clock position at the front and then holding that forward lean as you drive to get the power through swing your back about halfway through the leg drive to add some power and then finish with the arms now it is the big thing in the 500 you want to make sure that every stroke does have a powerful finish with the arms whereas on a 18 or 20 stroke per minute routine your arms aren't really coming in powerfully when you're racing you do want a strong finish right back off of it right I'm gonna slow for a second check the time please 1118 I've got a message. Ah. Wait a second. Just take this as a moment to recover slightly from making sure we're not overdoing it while I reply to someone who's asking when my race is. It's at 11.32. Warming up now. That's the lovely Taco Lutzma or Taco. I think it's Taco. Should really ask him how. Ah. But he got, he was racing the 2k race yesterday and he got a PB in it after thinking that he wasn't going to perform so I'm kind of hoping similar to what he went through and what my whoop strap is telling me if he can manage a PB maybe I can too and maybe you can at home Now, the good thing about that quick 20 second break is I suddenly feel a little bit more powerful. Everything seems to have kind of got a little bit more fluid. So I'm going to take the pace and rate up a little bit for about, let's say, 12 strokes. Here we go. bit more of a push from the legs more of a shove to just get the stroke a little bit harder one more in all honesty I don't know how many strokes that was back down to an easier pace Good news is I'm starting to at least get a slight glow on. A little bit of a sweat forming. Might even get to take my hoodie off for the race. What I'll do is I'll keep on rowing and warming up until the screen starts to give me more instructions. Right, let's take it up a little bit faster this time now. Let that power flow from your legs through your body into the handle. Nice straight arms gives you all that distance to finish. Right, last one. Let's ease off again.
want to make sure that when you actually do go up to 35, 40, 45, whatever your stroke rate is, it's not a total surprise that your body's used to having a bit of pace backwards and forwards. Right, 10 minutes to go. And then I might do what I did for the Scottish Championships where voiceover man will take over. Are you there, voiceover man? Of course, John. I'm always here. Yeah, yeah. Good luck today, John. Thank you very much. Let's hope I remember to book voiceover man today. Otherwise, that'll be very strange. Okay, so race lane status has come up. I am erg number 17. I tell you what. Well, I've got my phone next to me anyway. I'll show you what my screen is showing. Oh, oh no. There you go. So that's what it's saying right now. Oh, there we go. Back to erg number 17. There you go. So that's what it's showing me right now. Oh, now erg number zero. That's not a good sign. Back to please wait for further instruction. Erg number 18. I'm being pushed down the lanes. Go back to zero again. I'm gonna kick it up after this stroke. So let's go even faster. Remember, get your arms away after they come in to help you with your recovery. Let's do three more like this. And back down to 18. Or whatever I'm rowing at. <laughs> now, from a race plan point of view, it really is just a case of going flat out from the start. But you still have decisions to make. Do you try and work out how many strokes you're going to take and basically just close your eyes and count down like 60 strokes and see how you got on? Do you stare steadfastly at the monitor looking at the meters go down but knowing that that will help your posture slightly if you've got a mirror slightly in front of you do you just stare at that most of the time keep an eye on your technique all these things I mean to be honest all these options that you really don't need to think about right there we go, so my monitor has just switched to something. It's just showing a time and a pace, but it's not my time and pace. The laptop, hang on, take a photo of that for you. Keep on rowing when I stop for this, unless you want to stop with me to give yourself a little rest. Laptop is just showing that screen there. I'm not on there. That's okay. I'm further down the screen. It's the 30 year olds that are at the top. Right, I'm just gonna take my hoodie off so microphone goes away. Uh, oh burr. <laughs> Got the Fitness Matters t-shirt on today because I'm rowing for the team. This isn't about me and my row along. This is me rowing for my rowing team. Or the, the team that I row for. Oh, I've just got at the bottom of, bottom of the screen now just popped up. Right, back into the row. Right, so I've got a proper screen up now. Right, keep going. I'll take a photo of this too, let you see what 
I can see. This is what I can see in front of me. So drag factor is at 142. Hang on, unlock you so I can keep an eye on the time. 26. Six minutes to go. At least now I can tell you what rate and pace I'm doing for the warm up. So I'm up at 23 strokes a minute right now. I'm only just over two minute splits. Just taking it nice and easy. Let's do three more strokes and then ramp it up a bit more. Okay, so last stroke. Here we go, let's go faster. So I'm at 34 strokes a minute. And just at my 2k pace right now. Let's do three more. There we go. I just want these little bumps to just help my system get used to the fact we're about to do some hard work. Five minutes to go, according to the screen on the laptop. So really, as we get closer, I want to stop and let my muscles recharge. So in three strokes, I'm going to do a really fast primer. So here we go. Forty strokes per minute. One more. Just gonna do one more of them. And then I'll stop rowing completely and let my muscles recharge. Don't worry about the actual paces you're hitting on these fast bits. You'll be surprised how much faster you go when the race start happens. How you're, especially if you do a fast start. Okay, so here we go with our last little primer. Three, two, one. My screen went blank then. So I couldn't tell you what I was doing. So just easing down. Just to get ready. Right. Now, the counter's still there to now switch to tell you how long until the race. So you make up your mind it's two minutes until the race starts according to the screen, but we'll see whether there's a delay or not. You make up your mind whether you want to stop, whether you want to keep on rowing a little bit through this and then stop, it's your choice. Uh, excuse me while I reach out the screen again. Uh, just turning the sound on on, the, on my laptop hear it, if there's anything to hear. Uh, stop rowing, prepare for start. Oh. That's good, there's a list of the amount of boats that are still rowing right now. And one by one they're all stopping. There we go. Oh, number 12 is still going, come on 12, stop. All right. Get your head in the game. I'm gonna take let voiceover man take over now, okay? Hi, voiceover man. Hi there, it's me again, yes. So with the benefit of hindsight coming back and watching this, I know what I need to say. Now, first off, remember this is your 500 meter test and you have to go as hard as you can. 
I've left a three minute row for you. So no matter how fast or slow you are, once you're finished, just zip the video on to the end of that three minute row. And you'll see my reaction to the end of the race. However, I will flash a card up at the point when I finish. Now remember to concentrate, to keep your mind strong, to think about your technique and get ready to start. Come on, here we go. Ready. Okay, sit ready. Attention. We're going in three, two, one. Let's go. Quick race start. Three stabs at the handle to get the flywheel moving. Now, there's no on-screen graphic yet, but in a few seconds time, you'll see how I'm getting on in my race. Now, remember, just keep on pushing from those legs. There we go. There's the graphic. Keep pushing with the legs. Make sure and finish strong with that handle. Now my stroke rate right now is down at 42. And my pace is 131. So this currently isn't going to let me hit my PB for this training plan. Nice and clearly ahead of the other three. But there's a story to be told at the end of the race about what's happening here. Still up at 43, 44 strokes per minute. To be honest, as I was doing the race, I thought I was down around about 40, so it's actually quite a surprise to see this now. Keep on pushing with those legs, make sure and breathe. Proper finish with the handle, nice and strong. Try and get every ounce of power out of the machine that you can. Coming into a closing point, there's about 130 meters to go. I'm definitely slowed down, I'm down at 132, 133. You can see from my back this lunge at the front that I'm just trying to work out how to get any more power out of this. Even the slide to the front of the machine, I'm a little bit too short. Frankly, the rails came off with about 100 metres to go. So there you go. So that's the finish of my race was 132.5. So we still have another minute and a half of this video to play as you carry on rowing. Just keep on strong and then once you're finished, breathe. Either let the video play out or fast forward it on a little bit until it gets to the end of this row. But I recommend just breathing and at least just listening to my commentary across this. Just do keep on breathing. Make sure to stay strong. It's a short race, but you have to make sure and put in the power from the start. It's over quite nice and quick, so anything that feels tough is going to be finished soon. <sighs> Almost there, we're about 40 seconds left to go in this. Keep breathing, focus on whatever you need to focus on, whether it's the monitor or straight ahead or your technique, just focus. Get out those last few meters, push hard with the legs, get that fireball burning. This is your big test at the end of all your training. This is when it all pays off. Just a few more strokes to go. Finish hard with that handle. Pull it in and squeeze those shoulder blades tight. All the training has been about today, so don't give in. Just keep on pushing. Push hard with those legs. Got three or four more strokes to go, and that's the end of this video. And there we go. Oh, well. That was a disappointment. <sighs> slower than when I started five weeks ago but I just this thing's either right or it put my mind off my actual performance and then now's the time to break it to you that I didn't make weight so you can see on the screen basically because I didn't make weight um, I couldn't wasn't eligible for a medal or anything so that's why there was the four of us up at the top that were just rowing so I have the people that were not entered, I, I won, but I was 76 kilograms this morning when I woke up and as dry as I might, 
even after doing a 5k row and things earlier on, I just couldn't shift the weight. So I had to email into British rowing people and say, sorry folks. But to be honest, I think when I look back at the actual race results, which I'll put up on screen, I don't think my 132.5 would have come anywhere near a medal anyway. So it doesn't really matter. It was more about me and it just does show that sometimes all the training in the world, if you don't actually have it on race day, then you don't have it. So anyway, assessment aside, let's get into a cool down. Oh, in three, two, one, go. Oh. Now I saw my stroke rate was a lot lower than normal for this. I think I was in like kind of 40 most of the time, whereas at the Scottish I was up at 45. So there's that. And you can also tell just the very fact that I wasn't lying on the floor afterwards. I think shows it was a different race. But the important part, if you don't manage to hit a PB or win a medal or whatever, is that you analyze what might have happened. My energy system is obviously, according to whoop strap, I know that race, completely unrecovered. If I was at 22% or whatever, I was not primed for a peak day. Got it totally wrong. And then my actual performance, I think I was too low a stroke rate. When I watch it back, I'm sure technique would have been all over the place. But so the important part is to look at that and then learn and then take from it how to get faster. And that's the important part that you don't go, oh, well then, that's me dead in the water there. You say, right, what happened? I think I, had, I hadn't refined the fuel in my tank enough. I wasn't running on rocket fuel. I think I was just running on like regular old two star <laughs> with fumes coming out the back. Well, no, let's not say that. So it then becomes, do you go and do another cycle of 500 meter training to then do another test? Or do you think, right, in my case, it is that fuel refinery. So maybe I need to do some work on my base fitness, make sure that it's all in my legs well enough, which is quite handy because that's actually what I am doing next. So through December, it's just gonna be more long, slow rows. But what I might do is throw in a test, either a one minute test or another 500. Maybe the one minute actually. At the end of the week. And I can use that as a, a baseline to see what's going on with my system. Maybe on a Friday, I could do a one minute test and then go, oh, okay. Just to make sure, because the problem with always just doing long, slow rows is you do kind of get out of the habit of moving up and down the rail really quickly. Which is why on the 500 meter plan, although we have three long, slow rows a week, we still have two faster ones. So you don't kind of turn into like a, you're really good at going slow. And I'm stopping there. And I think as much as I was planning on doing like a 5k or something next or going for a session on the ski erg. I think I need to listen to my body, listen to my strap and just take the rest of the day off. Spend time with the family, put up the Christmas tree, all that stuff. So a uh, bit of a disappointing end to the 500 meter plan for me, it must be said. Um, but I don't want this to end on a downer. Please let me know how you got on with your final test. Um, in many ways, I kind of hope that what you take from today's, from my one, is just to show that you're allowed to not 
always be breaking the, the barriers of where you've been before. That sometimes you have to accept that step back that you can't quite manage what you hope for, but what you take from it is that you recalibrate yourself and you work out how you have to get faster rather than just sticking the machine on eBay and, <laughs> and taking up golf instead, which is never gonna happen. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the 500 meter plan. Um, hang around, check out the other, the 2K plan, the 5K plan. Um, and all the single individual rows that are already up on the uh, YouTube channel and on the podcast. And of course, keep an eye out for the rows coming up through December, which will be longer, nice slow rows, um, hopefully keep you interested and earning some meters for the, the holiday challenge. So uh, leave comments, subscribe to the channel, uh, whether it's the podcast or YouTube. Thank you so much for spending the past five weeks training with me. I hope you did better than me. Have a great day. Be well. Bye-bye.